In this video, we're gonna talk about query caching. So in most apps, you're going to be grabbing data from a backend or API requests, and those can get pretty big. And the bigger they are, and the slower the network the user has, the longer time it will take to actually load the data. Now, one of the best ways to speed up that experience is to use query caching. That is, the query gets saved on the device of the user. So what's the use case for query caching? Well, whenever the user sees the data again, and there are two scenarios where this happens. Either the user navigates back to a page or you're actually duplicating that data. And there's a lot of ways to customize how this cache works. So let me show you. So I've got this rental app right here where you can search for different locations in Italy and it will return you a list of properties that you can rent. And on this homepage right here, we've got an example of a query to Rome. So this is showing you the properties that would be returned if you search for Rome. And this is just one of those examples on the homepage. Now, after the user searches up here, they'll be directed to this page, which will be the search results page. And the results will be displayed right here. Now. If the user searches for Rome, well, we've already done a request to Rome, so we should cache this so that we can just display the results on the next page and we don't actually have to make a call to the API. All right, so let's set this up. So we go into our list right here and we'll add a backend query and we want an API call and I've got one for rentals right here and we can confirm that. And down here we have the query cache settings. So we're gonna enable that and then we're given some configuration options. The first one has to do with scope and there are two options. An app level cache will make this cache available on any page in your app and that's what we want. We'll come back to page level cache in a few minutes. Next, we wanna give our query cache a name. So we can just come in here and create a name. We're just gonna call this location and create that cache. Great, so we've set it up here. So now we can go to our next page and bind this list to that same cache. So we can come into our list right here, add the same API call as before, and let's enable that cache. We wanna set it to an app level cache and there it is, location. And that's it, that's all you need to do to set up query caching. Well, sort of. If you just had two identical calls, then this would be all you need. But these won't always be identical because on the search results page, we're gonna be displaying whatever the user searches for. And sometimes that'll be Rome, but sometimes that'll be Tuscany or Florence. And that's exactly what this unique key is for. And you can think about it like this. Each each cache is defined for a certain endpoint. That's the top level cache, the big cache bucket. But inside that, we have a bunch of smaller buckets and those are identified by these unique keys. In API calls, this is most often accomplished through query parameters. So the base URL will be the same, but the query parameter, the location for each call will be different. And by setting a unique key, we can cache each one of those locations. So we can have a cache for Rome and a cache for Tuscany and a cache for Florence. So how we would set this up in this scenario is that we would define a parameter on the page. And this would be sent to the page once the user is directed here from that original homepage. So the location string would be sent along as they navigate here. I've already got one set up here for location. And then in our query cache settings, we set the unique key to that location. So now every location that's searched will be cached. All right, we've got one option left, and this is for overriding the cache. And this is because while saving this cache is helpful, there are many scenarios that we'll talk about where you wanna clear it out and get new data from your API. So in our example, maybe a new property is added, or maybe the price changes, or the rating. And in that case, we don't wanna show the saved cache, we wanna get the new data from the API. And there's two ways to override or to clear the cache. The first one is here, where you set the condition under which the cache should be overridden. And the second way is to set up an action where you clear the query cache. Okay, so what's the difference between these two and when would you wanna use them? Well, there's a lot of overlap, but here's a general rule. These two different ways are triggered, are initiated differently. So the override cache is triggered by a condition, whether whatever you put in here is true or false. Whereas the clear query cache here 
is triggered by an action. So like when a user clicks a button or navigates to a page. Now, once again, these are overlapping categories. You can check for conditions in the action flow editor and you can respond to actions in the override cache field, but it's helpful as a general principle. Okay, but when do you use these two different types? Here are a few examples. You could use this when the location of the user changes. You could check whether there's new content or new data. In our example, maybe you know that on average, a property is added every hour. So you could set the cache to be overridden every hour. You could also clear it if there's a new follower or other social interaction. You could use this if you give a manual refresh option to your users. Or maybe if you've got some role-based access, like they sign up for a subscription. So you show more results because they now have access to it. So after they sign up for that subscription, then you could clear the cache. Okay, so that's app level caching. But we have another option here and that's page level caching. So how does that work? Well, let me jump into another example and show you. Here we've got a stack overflow like page. We've got a user and he's answered some questions. Now up here, we've got this rating bar that allows users to rate Andres. Now, because this is a stateful widget, when a user rates him, this will trigger a rebuild of the page. And so for this list that's generated from a backend query, this would refetch that data. But of course, that's both unnecessary and kind of annoying for your users to see a flash of the data down here. This is where page level caching comes in. So let's come in here and add a backend query and let's grab our reviews collection, confirm that, turn on query caching, and we wanna scope this just to the page and just give this a name. Great, so now if you have any widgets or actions that will re-render the page, your backend queries will just pull from the cache. They won't actually fetch that data on the network. And if you're wondering which widgets will trigger a rebuild, it's these widgets and actions right here. Let us know down below in the comments if you have any questions and we'll see you in the next video.